Welcome to another coding challenge video. I am, I wanna let you know something before I get started. Thinking about changing the name of the coding challenges, to me the idea of a challenge is something you have to beat or like defeat. I want something more exploratory and collaborative and train themed, like a maybe a journey, but I don't know if that works. If you got any ideas, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what should these be called going forward. But today, boy do I have an exciting one for you. It is one that I made during a live stream uh, about a year ago, translating an image's pixels to ASCII characters like you're seeing right here. So I wanna do this again. I, bear, I have no memory of doing this a year ago, so I'm kind of starting fresh. We'll see if the result I get is the same as what I have here. And then hopefully you will make your own creative version of this and share it with me on the Coding Train website or in the comments or on social media or all the ways people share things with each other. Let's get started. First, I would like to thank but this is a wonderful example, I believe, of some shader code to render some beautiful ASCII art. And it all relies entirely on this array of characters. This array of characters is ordered from either brightest to darkest or darkest to brightest, depending on what color you're sort of rendering the background or the character. So I believe that what I can do, oh, let's use the whiteboard. So the idea is that I have an image and maybe I'll start like I did a year ago with an image of a kitten. Now, every pixel of an image has an RGB value. Typically, the RGB values are stored as numbers between zero and 255. If I want to get a brightness value for a given pixel, the higher the number, the more the color there is. The more red, the more green, the more blue. If all of those values are all the way up to 255, we've got white. So the higher the numbers, the brighter the pixel. If I wanted to have one number to represent the brightness of a given pixel, the sort of grayscale value of that pixel, one way I could do that is by averaging these three values. Now there are more sophisticated algorithms for taking an RGB value and translating it into a black and white image, uh, a brightness value. Maybe I'll investigate that as I get further along with this project, but I think I'm gonna get a good enough effect just with the average. So let's say that any one of these pixels, let's pick this one, let's say that its brightness value happens to be 137. Now if you'll come with me back over to my computer screen, let me remind you again of this string of characters called density. Do you think, is there any chance I could write out all of those in the same order on my whiteboard over there? Almost none, but I'm gonna try to do it anyway. Question mark, exclamation mark, A, B, C. Oh no, I ran out of room. I did not plan this well. Close enough, that keeps going. Maybe I'll, maybe it'll be fixed, who knows? I don't know what you're seeing. This is like a magic thing happens after I do this. <laughs> it's amazing. If we're looking at this, like first of all, there are so many possible, one beautiful, abstract, generative kinds of images we could make just using these ASCII characters. So I would encourage you to go in that direction but I'm gonna go in a different direction, which is to say the denser the character, the more pixels it uses, I'm gonna match that to a bright pixel. So essentially, I can create some sort of mapping where if the color is 255, the brightness value, then I would render this particular character. If the brightness value were zero, I would render whatever character <laughs> that I didn't get to down here. And then 137 would be appropriately somewhere here. So like 127 would be exactly in the middle. So maybe 137, this is like highly approximate, might be this character would get drawn over here to to represent, you know, the uh, ear of this particular cat who is now sadly in jail. Oh, that poor cat is in jail. Let's let, we gotta let the cat out. Cat, go free, run, like the wind, go. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this string of characters and bring it into my own P5JS sketch. Now, in case for some reason this is the first time you're ever watching The Coding Train, this is P5JS, a JavaScript library for creative coding, images, animations, and all sorts of wonderful, beautiful stuff. 
Find out more at p5js.org. I also want to point out that I'm trying to get in the habit a little bit more about when I declare a variable that I know isn't going to ever change. I'm going to use const instead of let. Oh, I forgot to talk about the timer. <laughs> Is, has there been a timer going this whole time? I hope so. Good. It's usually now over here. That's where it is. It should be there. How long? I've been doing this for like seven and a half hours, even though you've only been watching this for 10 minutes or whatever it is right now. Before I start trying to load a video into my P5JS sketch, I have got this nice little photo of Gloria Pickle. My puppy and dog. And I quickly just removed the background from the image in Photoshop, which I think will make the ASCII version of this image pop a bit more um, in terms of what I'm about to try to do. So. Um, I uploaded a very small 48 by 48 pixel size image to this P5 uh, project. I've got a separate video about how to upload files to the editor if that's something that you haven't done before. And then all I need to do is add a preload function to load the image. And we can see that Gloria has been loaded. It's kind of fuzzy, it's blurry because I'm using this very low resolution version. That's gonna make translating it over to ASCII easier. Of course, I could work with altering the scale within the code itself, but I think the demonstration is gonna be much easier if it is a one-to-one -one mapping. Each pixel gets one character. The next step that I need to do is write an algorithm to walk through and look at the brightness of every single pixel within this image. Now, this is probably a block of code that I have typed in countless numbers of videos and explained it over and over again. I do have an entire video all about how the pixel array works in P5.js, so I would look at that if you want all of the details, but just to give you the quick high-level points, every single pixel has an RGB value as well as an alpha value, the alpha dealing with transparency. So I am not worrying about transparency for this particular application, but I do have to account for that within the pixel array. Every single pixel we can think of as having a number zero through the end of the image. So in this case, with this five by five image, there's 25 pixels. But since every single pixel has four numbers associated with it, the actual array storing all the information is RGBA for pixel zero, then RGBA for pixel one, then RGBA for pixel two, et cetera, et cetera. So that translates back to this really nice formula where I can say the column plus the row times the width times four gives me the red value for any given column and row pixel. And then I could get the green value by going one spot later and the red, the blue value, sorry, by going two spots later. So I kind of just explained the whole thing. Uh, it might not have totally made sense to you. What I would suggest, if this is confusing to you, go find a piece of graph paper or any regular paper, make your own little five by five image and just try numbering everything and trying things manually. That's really the way I learned this stuff and kind of was able to wrap my head around it. And you can also check out that other video where I explain it in more detail. Just to make sure this worked, let me now try to draw every pixel as a square. So first thing I need to do is figure out how, what is the size of the squares. For the moment, I'm still working on this for canvas. I'm gonna to try to switch over to making these DOM elements at some point, but I could just take the width of the canvas divided by the width of the actual image to know what that ratio is. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong here? I messed something up. I guess I need to call load pixels. Ah! I need to call load pixels. So if I'm going to use the pixel array of that image, I've got to alert P5 to it and call load pixels. So there you can see pixelated Gloria. I think for changing this into ASCII, having an even lower resolution image of Gloria is going to improve things. So I quickly made one that's just 20 by 20 and uploaded that, and I'm using that instead now.
Now again, there's so many visualization possibilities we could do here with RGB color, with multiple images, with varying degrees of resolution. I'm not gonna go down all of those roads. It's a train, it's a train, it's not a car, we're not driving on a road, it's a train. The track, the train track I'm gonna follow is towards ASCII. So let's now look at the brightness value of each of these just by doing the average of RGB. Now there is a P5JS function called brightness. We could try that and see if we get a different result. Um, this is actually taking the color value and converting it to hue, saturation, brightness. But just to keep things simple for me, just gonna do the average. Now we can see a grayscale version of Gloria. Now to add text. So what if I were, instead of drawing a square, were just to draw an individual character, just the character G for Gloria. Let's not draw the image anymore. Let's make the font the size of the square. And then I will need to shift everything down because I want the letter to appear in the center of the square. I think this would probably more, be much more clear if I used a black background. And we could kind of see Gloria peeking out there from all of those Gs. But again, this is not what I want to do. This is something I could do, and there's plenty of possible outcomes. Maybe I could start writing some poetry, or having the text change, or pulling from a live data feed. So many things. But instead, I want to take the brightness value and map it to one of these characters in my density string. So I can get the length of the string. So now I need the mapping to go from zero to that length, or length minus one. So the character index is, take the brightness value, which has a range between zero and 255, and map that to some number between zero and the length of the string. Ah, but this is going to give me interim values, like character 3.1759. It's like kind of like pi, but not. I don't know why I picked that out of my head. So I need to add the floor function to take the decimal off. So I'm only getting the index to a particular value. Zero, one, two, three. Now, instead of drawing G, I can just draw that particular character. And the point of this is for the brightness to come not from me setting the color of that character I'm drawing, but from the contours, the amount of pixels, that shape of that character itself. So now the fill shouldn't be tied to brightness, it should just be 255 for all of them. Now, do you see, do we see Gloria in there? Not so much just yet. Let's see if we can fiddle with this a bit. One thing is, this is inverted, right? So remember, the brightest characters are at the front, the beginning of the string, and the darker ones are at the end. So I want to reverse this to from length down to zero. There, now that looks quite a bit more like Gloria. I think there's an issue here with the spacing between the characters. Maybe I want to have the, the spacing between the characters to be less. Um, I want to arrange them in a different way. I want to use a different font, a different scale but I think that this is going to be more effective to play with by changing this over from canvas to actual DOM elements, meaning I'm going to render the text on the web page itself rather than draw the pixels for text into an image, a canvas image. Both have value depending on what application you might want to use this for, but I'm just curious to see, since I'm in the browser, I could actually just copy-paste my ASCII art and put it into somewhere else. That would be kind of fun to do. I'm gonna take a big leap of faith now and get rid of Create Canvas and type in No Canvas. I'm also going to remove the draw loop because I'm just rendering a static image. Now, of course, once I add video in a moment, you know, at about 17 hours into this video, <laughs> then I'll need to put the draw loop or some type of uh, animation back in. But right now I'm gonna remove that. One thing I'm curious about actually is, can I get Gloria to show up just in the console, right? Because ultimately what I'm doing is for every row, now I need to do the rows, and I just realized that my algorithm is in reverse because I'm taking for every column, no, I need, I need to do all of the columns. In other words, currently the way I've written those nested loops, I'm going to this pixel, then 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 back up to here. And what I want to do instead is go through all of the columns, then down to the next row. So I think I could just flip those two lines of code. And then I can accumulate all of the characters into a string for each row. 
There's no concept of drawing now. Just that row of characters. And I believe then I should be able to just say console log row, run the sketch. <laughs> That's kind of a squashed Gloria, right? Stretch it out. Can we like stretch it out in post somehow just to like see it for a moment? So the reason it's squashed is because each pixel takes up the same amount of space horizontally and vertically, but these particular pixels are spread out. There's more spacing between each line than there is between each character. So I can have more control over manipulating that by rendering my own text into the browser page. Now I can't see it because I've got a dark gray background and very small characters that are black text. So I can add some code into the CSS file to change the background color, set the font, and make the font larger. Now, if you don't know CSS, good, we're in the same boat. Neither do I! But I know enough to kind of make things work when I need to, and I do have a video tutorial a bit about the basics of CSS that you could refer to. One thing that's kind of critical here that I haven't addressed is that I'm using the font Courier on purpose. For me, it's a little bit easier right now to just use a fixed width font, meaning every character, no matter what it is, takes up the same amount of horizontal space. Um, this makes just sort of the math of arranging the pixels much easier, although it is an interesting problem to think about how we would do this without a fixed width font. That's something that you could take on as your own challenge, perhaps. I'm also noticing something a bit odd here, which is that the contours of Gloria are lost. Every single row starts all the way over at the left. Why is this? Well, if we go back to here, you might notice that this character at the very end of the density string is a space. And if I put a space, into a web page, it's not actually going to necessarily render it unless it's in between characters in a particular way. So what I need to do here is instead of rendering a space, actually use the non-breaking space character thingy-mabob. What is that? Ah, it is an HTML entity, which is a piece of text that begins with an ampersand and ends with a semicolon. And there's different reserved ones, like ampersand, greater than, less than. There's one for non-breaking space character. I forget what that is, though. What does it stand for? Non-breaking space. I think it's just SP for space. I think what I'll try to do is add the line height property to spring the lines a bit closer to each other. If I make that 12 point, okay, that's much too overlapping. That's a little bit better. Let me go back to the higher resolution image, the one that was 48 by 48 pixels, make a smaller font size, and there we go. You can see Gloria in there, can't you? <laughs> Don't you see Gloria? What I love about this now is I can take this, hit copy, make a, just a plain text file, and paste it in. This is definitely looking much better kind of white on black. Let me try to recreate that in my version here. Ta-da! Gloria Pickle as ASCII art. Now, I want to show you how easy I think this will be to take this from a static image to a video. I have no idea where the timer is at right now, but I expect that I'm going to have it in the next minute or two. Instead of Gloria, let me make a variable called video. No more preload. There's my video image right now. Let me resize it to 48 by 48. I'm going to add draw back in to use the draw loop, even though there's no canvas. Oh. I don't need these width and heights anymore. I forgot about that because I'm not drawing. This should be video. Hey, hey, I'm getting somewhere really fast. And oh, I've, I've done a horrible thing. So because I'm using creative, I hit stop. I just created image after image after image on the page. So instead of using create div, I need to update the text of each div. I think this will also be easier if I just make one div that has line breaks in it rather than each row is a particular div. You might be asking, what is a div? I'll include a link in the video's description with more info. So now, just one div that I'm going to display on the page. So instead of each row being a separate string, I'm just going to write 
a string called ASCII image and accumulate all the text into ASCII image. And then after each row, add the HTML tag for a line break. I believe this should work. Okay, well, I need to update the div to include that text. And we've done it. We can stop the timer. I mean, I have some more things to say. I want to clean this up a little bit. But we can stop the timer. This is pretty close to whatever I did a year ago. Looking at this, I'd like to sort of see if I can fix this up a bit. One of the things that I can immediately do is work with that string of characters that I have in my density string. For example, what, since I have this kind of locked in green background, I think I can use many more blank characters, blank spaces for uh, darker characters. So for example, just adding a lot of spaces here, we can start to see that I am kind of reducing, I'm essentially thresholding the image in a way so that only the brightest pixels get uh, kind of going with a particular character. I can also just use different character strings. For example, here's another one, although I have it inverted. So if I have the darker characters at the beginning of the string and the brighter characters at the end, I will want to change, update my mapping to go from zero to length. We can also play around with the resolution of the image. I don't need to squash it into a square, I don't think. So now if it's 64 by 48, and I've adjusted the spacing of the characters and the line height, I've done a pretty good job of having the image retain its original aspect ratio and dimensions. I'm recording this during a live Twitch stream, so by the way, you can go subscribe on Twitch. I don't know how much I'll be streaming on Twitch versus YouTube, but I might as well put this in the video right now. And in the chat, I just got a suggestion, why don't you filter out green, since that's what a green screen is for. So yes, if I want to make use of the color values of the pixels, there's a lot more that I could try. I just, I could keep going. I don't want to keep going. I want to stop here. I want you to explore this, and I want to create, I want to see what kind of ASCII art you create from this video. Please share it with me on the Coding Train website, on social media. All the links and various things are in the description. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this coding challenge. Ah, the boiler just came on. There's a loud buzzing sound. I'm leaving it in. We're leaving it in. This is in. I'm in a freezing cold garage right now. I had the heat off during this whole time just so I could record this coding challenge with you. And the heat just came back on. I'm going to go warm up inside with a toasty mug of something. And I'll see you next time on the coding train. Bye.